morning. Welcome to Good Day Gardening. I am your host, Jacqueline Ray, and this is my garden. Uh, I don't have too many things to update you on today. Uh, just a small update, but there's a couple of things I wanted to show you. There's uh, some insects on the tomatoes uh, that I wanted to show you. And then I wanted to show you how the Wild Everglades tomato is doing. And then a mulberry and a flower surprise that I got. Let me start with the tomato. Now, the cherry tomato was the first one to go. Um, they were attacked by these insects. I'm going to bring you in and I'm going to show you the insects because the insects are still here. I sprayed them with uh, a heavy neem oil application. It did knock out over half the population, so I'm really um, pleased with how that turned out. There's still a few left. Uh, I'm not going to spray a second time. I'm just going to come through and I'm going to mechanically kill them. Uh, just take my clippers and just start cutting, cutting them in half. Um, same thing I do with the lover grasshoppers. Once they get to a certain size, you have to do some do something to kill them. So, um, but like I said, the the first neem oil application I I sprayed I sprayed quite heavily because there was quite a, a lot of them. But it knocked out I want to say three quarters of the population. So it worked really well. So, but let me show you what the insect looks like. Okay. All right. I'm gonna try to zoom in on this guy because I don't want to scare him away and have him run away. But this is what the insect looks like. It is a eastern leaf-footed bug, and it's a true bug. But you can see the white stripe on his back, which makes him the eastern variety. So that's kind of about as close up as I can get with this camera. I took some photos. I'll show you the photos. But what they have is they have a little proboscis, which is a little mouth part that looks like a needle. And they go in and they stick it into the fruit of, or plant whatever they're eating and they suck out all the fluids from it. This is called a piercing sucking uh, insect um, is how they classify that. And see the damage on the Roma tomato all up on here? That's kind of what they do. That's from them putting their little proboscis in there and sucking away at the juices. Now here are two of them that are kind of in the in-between juvenile and adult stages. Um, when they're juvenile, they're more reddish orange color, um, but they still kind of have that same shape to them. So the Everglades tomato is doing pretty awesome. I mean, look at all the tomatoes on it. This is June. So having tomatoes at the end of June is nearly unheard of. The only other tomato that I have ever been able to get um, tomatoes on it. Uh, into July have been the Super Sweet 100s, uh, which is a cherry-sized tomato, a specific variety. So the flavor is um, pretty acidic. Uh, it's not as sweet as the Super Sweet 100s, um, but it's good. Uh, it's a good acidic. Uh, I made a recipe, a pork roast recipe the other day, and it called for two pounds of tomatoes. And so I did one pound of the grape size tomatoes because I had plenty of those and then I did one pound of these guys and it came out quite delicious. This is the mulberry that I just bought and look all the way down here right here I got mulberries uh, and I already took out one it had three now it's got two and I gave uh, the first one to a friend of mine so she could try it so but I'm all excited. I've already got mulberries. And mulberries are delicious, by the way. I got flowers over here. So I got one here. I got number two, number three, number four, and like a little itty bitty one. Maybe number five. So I got five more coming. So I'm super excited. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye on this. Make sure the insects don't harm it. Because um, I really love mulberries. And I'm. Um, Looking forward to it. So you want to talk about something that's hardy. This is a cabbage. And I started neglecting this whole um, bag. I had started it as an experiment and then I had enough plants to take care of. So I stopped taking care of it. And the tomato hasn't died. And the cabbage hasn't died yet. And so I'm going with these guys are pretty darn hardy. Now I got lots of flowers on the tomatoes, but I doubt I'm going to get any fruit out of them because it's just too hot. What tomato this is. Oh, this is a jelly bean hybrid tomato. Oh, interesting. So, oh, I do have one tomato. Let's see, right down here. 
And I don't think I ate one of these yet. Little guy. It does look like a jelly bean, doesn't it? Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Pretty darn good, actually. So, but, um, they get neglected and uncared for. I don't water them, but I guess maybe I should since they're trying so hard to stay alive. Um, I probably feel sorry enough for them. Um, that I'll water them again. <laughs> Let me go back and show you. These are the collards that I put in the ground. That's one collard. That's another collard. And then this is the cabbage. All three of these are planted in the ground now. Um, after the gentleman I saw with his collards planted in the ground were five feet tall, they were five years old, I was like, oh my god, so I, I put my, my collards and my cabbage in the ground just so I could see what happens. So the slugs are eating it. It's got holes all over it, but that's okay. They don't really do a whole lot of harm. They just eat the leaves. And then I eat the leaves that they haven't eaten yet. Um, it did go through some shock, so it's a little curly. And I think part of that is um, like aphids, because there were some aphids on it for a little They're while. another sucking, um, piercing sucking insect. So they insert their little mouth part and suck out all the juices and sometimes that causes it. Um, I sprayed them with neem oil and that helped get rid of the aphids but it did not get rid of the slugs. Da -da 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 -da. A gladiolus bloomed. All right, This is the only one that's bloomed so far. I do have a flower spike on another one but I thought that was pretty fantastic so they are pretty you know they just really are and it's kind of lopsided. <laughs> Probably one of the cats came through here and walked through it. The cats like to do that. They like hunting the lizards and other things that grow and live in my garden. So it drives my dogs nuts because they'll see them through the window and then they'll bark and bark and bark and it'll be a cat in the garden. So that was the awesome flower surprise that I got. Again, it's a surprise because I wasn't expecting these things to come back anyway. But here's another flower spike. And then the other one that has a flower spike is like way over there. It's right there. It's a flower spike. So, um, so I'm pretty pretty impressed. Um, I've got a few that kind of don't look like they're gonna make it. Um, I think they get a fungus in my garden. Um, I have a fungus. It's called rust. You really can't get rid of it a whole lot. You can treat for it. Um, there are you know chemical treatments for rust fungus. But you're never really going to get rid of it. You're only going to kind of put a band-aid on it. So I don't treat for it. I just kind of let whatever survives, survives. Um, and move on from there. And uh, the rain lilies get it quite a bit. Um, so they are a carrier for it. But there's so many rain lilies, I'd never be able to pull them all up anymore. So I just kind of leave them and deal with it. Okay. There's my beautiful devil's trumpet. My Datura. All right. This is um, that's almost all I have for this morning. <laughs> this is a cranberry hibiscus that randomly popped up on its own, and I decided it kind of looked nice there. So I've been trimming it down to keep it compact, because otherwise it'll grow into big monstrosity and take over, and I don't want it to do that. So I've been keeping it trimmed. It kind of looks nice there. It has great foliage to it. And you can do that with these guys. They they shrub out into a nice little shrub when you keep them trimmed back. If you don't keep them trimmed back, see the one all the way in the back? Right here, he goes from here all the way up to here, one single stem. If you don't trim them back, that's what they do. They just grow on one single stem, and they'll grow up to, I don't know, six to eight feet. There's a couple of them over there. Um, there's another one in the back that goes up to here. Another one goes here, and then there's another one all the way in the back that goes up high too. So, but they just grow on a long single stem, and they don't really look all that great when they're on the single stem, so it looks better here where I've cut it back into a nice little round shrub. So, and I'll just keep them small like that, because so, he's kind of pretty, and I do like the foliage of it. The foliage is really, really nice, so it's a good accent plant. Okay. Alright, well I hope you enjoy your day. I'll see you next time. Remember, it's always a good day in the garden. Ciao.